Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Um, Psalm 34 verse 19, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. New Living Translation, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. That has to be my favorite. Um, English Standard Version, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Berean study, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Looking at all the versions, they all seem to either use the word affliction or troubles. Um, and, and most of them at the bottom say, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And then obviously the Amplified Bible says, but the Lord rescues him from them all. So deliverance is rescue. When, when you are delivered, you are rescued from whatever is troubling you. Afflictions, troubles pretty much mean the same thing. So I'm going to be uh, swapping between the word afflictions and troubles. And obviously this is an encouraging scripture. Um, we're in our first week of the month, which means prayer and fasting time. Obviously, as we go into the new month um, and as we refocus ourselves into the word of God and as we basically just continue to look to God to get us through all the plans that we have um, going forward into the into the month, into the year, um, all the challenges we are facing, it, it, it can be, it is a trying time all over the world. It, at the moment, to be honest, regardless of what country you're in, um, it's just challenge upon challenge and, and upon challenge. Now, the thing is, as a righteous person, um, you can expect, remember the Bible says, be, do, be, do not be conformed to this wor world. In other words, do not do not do things by the standards of this world. Um, not because you are better, not because you you know it's, it's meant to make you feel better than other people, but because you do have help. You are not at the mercy of these challenges that you are facing. Um, it's not the end um, for you if you are facing challenges. And I can definitely, I, I don't always, because obviously you're not meant to be constantly confessing your challenges and your difficult times. I can guarantee you that even the strongest of people you work with, the strongest of people you know, the strongest of people you look up to, they are facing challenges guaranteed. I can tell you that now. Um, so the challenges are everywhere. And yes, sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming, but that's exactly the point. We need to understand where challenges come from, particularly as children of God. I heard this young man on social media testify um, that during the lockdown, he decided to read the Quran and to read the Bible. And because he had always been a, a Christian that just sort of, he was just, a, he said, he, he called himself a, just a loose Christian. He, 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 he he defined himself as a Christian before before COVID, but he didn't really care for the Bible. And to be honest, that's how I lived my life um, before COVID. And then he says he gave himself during lockdown when he had nothing else to do, he gave himself a chance to read the Bible and to read it over and over. And when he got to the four Gospels, he was absolutely convinced that was the truth. And he said what that did for him was it presented the truth to him. He, he gave himself the chance to just listen to this information and decide, is this true or is it false? And he felt a peace within him that convinced him that the Bible is true. And so then he dedicated his life to Jesus, gave his life to Jesus, and that was the beginning. But what I noticed the most was he did say, yes, things have got harder since I did that. There's a reason for that, guys. It's not a coincidence that the, the, the more you keep confessing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the, the more challenges you face. Look at um, everywhere across the world, of all the gods, of all the religions, look at the way even Jesus is mocked. You know, we had Glastonbury last week and one of the celebrities wore a crown on their head, um, a, a crown of thorns, just like Jesus. Um, I, I didn't really follow what they were saying, but, you know, there was a bit of an uproar because... Um, Personally, I genuinely felt like that was a mockery of what Jesus did. Because when Jesus wore that crown of thorns, you know, he was suffering for our sins. And if you knew just what you were meant to suffer for your sins and what Jesus took on himself, if you understood what that meant, you certainly wouldn't muck about with it like that. Um, and so 
the, the point being, this brother was sharing that since I gave my life to Christ, things seem to have got harder for some reason. But you know, the way things get harder for you as a Christian, it's not that suddenly you're going to be poor when you are rich or suddenly, no, you suddenly have all these afflictions, all these little troubles here and there. They are, they, there's a reason for that. And the reason being, you know, Jesus is hated by demonic forces. He's absolutely hated. Make no mistake about it. He is hated by demonic forces. And so when you uh, submit your life to him, you are, you are taking, you're going to be, you're going to face um, the, 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 you know, the challenge of those demonic forces trying to cause trouble in your life, trying to cause frustration in your life. You know, that there's just going to be, it's never really big, big, terrible things happening. Unless of course you've neglected prayer and fasting for a long time. Um, but you will face challenges here and there. I mean, I'm fresh off a 40 day fast. Literally, it's not even been a year since I completed my 40 day fast. Um, yes, I've seen great strides. My life has changed immensely in just these. It was in November when I finished the fast last year. So let's just say uh, seven months now. Right. It's been seven months since I completed the 40 day fast. And yes, I can tell you that the, the you know, the things that are happening in my life are immense. There's major changes in my life. Right. Um, in my life is changing in ways that I am just I'm having to even adjust my the way I spend my time, um, the, the amount of the amount of time I spend. I'm just busier. Let me just put it that way without giving out without giving away too much, because a lot of what I'm doing is developing. It's not that I don't want to share, but a lot of what I'm doing is just projects that are starting out. They're still brand new. So I need to sort of focus on them in prayer and fasting. Right. Um, but I can tell you that God is God is presenting uh, new promotions. And what it is, is just my life being restored. God said, I will restore unto you uh, the wasted years, the locusts and the kanker have eaten from your life. What does that mean? All those wasted years of generational cases when my life was going nowhere, when everything I tried failed, right? When you submit yourself to God and confess and, and, and admit your guilt to God and repent, and repent the guilt of your forefathers and your bloodlines and yourself. And do that over a sustained um, length of time. Well, that's what I did. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. God will show you what you need to do. You you are delivered. So I was delivered from those. What what Again, what did, what did some of the versions say? But the Lord comes to the, the rescue each time. God came to my rescue and to the rescue of my family. However, that doesn't change the day-to-day -day challenges. In fact, sometimes it feels like there's more little frustrations here and there. And I use the word frustrations very deliberately because that's exactly what they are. These challenges are meant to frustrate you. They are meant to want to cause you to give up. When you look at people who are depressed, those are spirits that depress them. And the whole point of depression is it's meant to cause, drive the person to a point where they feel like there's absolutely no hope. It's the same with anxiety. These are all, these are two different spirits, but they have the same end goal. Um, when you sort of, uh, if you, if, if, there, if there was ever a chance to sort of study really, truly, spiritually what happened to people who, for example, committed suicide, you can find that they were either anxious for a long time or, for, or, um, or depressed for a very long time and uh, to a point where they really absolutely felt hopeless. And unfortunately for these people, all that means is there was just no one standing in the gap for them. No one was praying for them. And it's absolutely heartbreaking to think that there are people in this world who have no one who's praying for them. Because that's the key. Once prayer is involved, guys, it doesn't matter. Even if the person himself is not praying, this is the power of God. If there's someone else out there praying for that person, one way or the other, God delivers that person. And eventually that person can be healed to the point where they in turn start to pray for other people. They start to strengthen other people. They start to encourage other people. For example, what I'm doing with the Daily Share is exactly that. Um, it's meant to sort of encourage people. It's meant to strengthen people. It's meant to show people that what you're going through, someone else is going through it. So these little frustrations that you face every day when, when finances um, are not quite adding up, when uh, the, you know you, you, there's so many uh, challenges calling for your attention at the same time, it literally feels like you're going to break. You're going to break down. You are not going to break down. The, the, the scripture is saying exactly that. The righteous person, especially when your life is submitted to Jesus, the righteous person may have many troubles, 
but the Lord delivers him from them all. Let's go to the New Living Translation. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Guys, even if you're facing 50, right now, as you can count, if you could write a list of everything that's happening, that is a challenge, that is causing you frustration. Don't think that God is going to be too preoccupied with the first frustration. You won't have time to fix the second one. No, God can deliver you from a thousand frust- uh, 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 afflictions all in one go. Hold on to the word of God. The, the yesterday's share said, "If God said it, then count on it. Count on the scripture. The Lord will come to your rescue each time. You may not know how He's going to rescue you. You may not know when He's going to rescue you. I, I, I shared the other day about how sometimes it can feel like you are missing the deadline. You have a bill uh, that's telling you that you need to have paid this money by such and such a date, and you pray and beg God to say, "God, I need to pay this. Where do I go?" And no help seems to come until the date of the bill even two days after the date guys just relax and give yourself submit yourself to god let god carry you jesus said come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest but you have to you have to remember to do that you have to remember to say jesus look at all this look at all this mess i have to sort out but i come to you come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest because guys at the end of the day do you know what the whole point of all those frustrations is the whole point i can tell you from personal experience is that all these frustrate all these troubles and tribulations yes they are from demonic forces they are meant to cause me so much frustration that even the promotions that God has given me, even this restoration that God is is, is um, causing in my life, it, it's meant to cause me so much frustration that I even give up and start to doubt. And once you start to doubt and give up, you start speaking negative, you start to confess negative, and that's where the enemy wants you. When you start confessing the wrong things, you are reinforcing those negative things happening in your life, and they are going to, they're going to happen even more and more and more. If anything, when you're going through really stressful times, it's better to just be quiet and only open your mouth to pray and just be quiet the rest of the time. And God will get you out of that time. Before you know it, you'll be looking at that. You'll be saying, oh my gosh, last week, last week I was under so much pressure. There was so much happening all in one go. Just be quiet. Your mouth can get you into trouble. Your mouth can make you say things that are causing more problems, that are causing more frustrations, that are causing more uh, tribulation in your life that are causing more afflictions don't confess them at the same time that's not to say don't get help no uh, god will make a solution look for help by all means find a solution work towards finding solutions you just focus and the other thing is as you are training yourself and uh, as you are working through these problems even though they're all happening at the same time you are being trained to be a problem solver if you can learn to be strong in difficult times, you're the very person God is going to use to strengthen other people. You're the very person God is going to use to encourage other people. So, no, you know, if, if depending on how you handle these stressful situations, God can use you to, to, to help other people. So be strong and remember the Lord comes to the rescue each time don't forget that and believe that and i hope you enjoy this um period this first seven days um of prayer and fasting um someone said what scripture are we praying on i would say this very scripture here is a very good example just hold on to the scripture and keep repeating it over and over the reason i don't really share scriptures is at any point uh, first off i believe that scriptures are very personal and whatever you're going through um, you know, you know the scripture that works for you. I literally, if I sort of recite all the scriptures on all the things I fight every day, I think I must have at least, I tried to write them the other day. I got to about 15 scriptures, right? And that's because of what I'm dealing with personally. Um, it's not all bad, but like I said, God has entrusted certain projects into my hands where I just need his wisdom. I cannot do these things without him. And so there's at least 15 vo- verses that I'm counting on every day. And I keep repeating these scriptures as I go, but some of them may be more meaningful. Some of them may be more needed at the time than the other. But a scripture like this one, um, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Just keep repeating that to yourself. Keep repeating that to yourself. 
himself. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Thank you, Father, for coming to the rescue. Thank you for coming to the rescue over all these many situations. Yes, there's many of them, but you are God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You can handle every single one of these challenges. Thank you, Jesus. I come to you because you said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Being heavy laden means being bombarded with too many challenges, too many problems. Jesus said, come unto me. What does that mean? Come to his word. Obviously, you can't go to him to any specific place physically. Come to his word. Keep reciting his word. And let's just use this scripture. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day.